Okay. So the house that I picked for the presentation is the Ennis House, a house created by Frank Lloyd Wright. And in the presentation that will follow, it will I try to make it as a journey, which was kind of the same to my journey in a way to, to understand who really Ennis is. So I will start with a short video and I would like at the beginning to tell me if the, the audio works. The ghosts are moving tonight, restless, hungry. May I introduce myself? I'm Watson Pritchard. In just a minute, I'll show you the only really haunted house in the world. I'm Frederick Lauren, and I've rented the house on Haunted Hill tonight so that my wife can give a party, a haunted house party. She's so amusing. There'll be food and drink and ghosts and perhaps even a few murders. You're all invited. If any of you will spend the next 12 hours in this house, I'll give you each $10,000 or your next of kin in case you don't survive. The party's starting now and you have until midnight to find the house on Haunted Hill. The new thing under the sun, the better order, was never ushered in with gray gloves and white spats. If we can avoid a revolution, we are lucky. There have been so many disappointments and difficulties here. Let's not mention the haunted house party, ghosts, and few murders that brought such negative stigma. Seven people, including my brother, have been murdered in it. 1417. Hideously maintained, painted, painted and butched, only the stonework is splendid, however. If the Anises would obligedly die, something might be done with their present monstrosity. It is great pity, and no one that knows what the building might have been will ever forget or forgive. There are times when it can seem like fully to keep fixing a house that in many ways has proven stubbornly unfixable. 1423, Colossus disappeared. A wave of trees forcefully threw their branches towards me in ruthless whips. Three voices started murmuring from far back. My grandfather designed this house and my father was the contractor. And now here I am, the third generation trying to save it. The whole house was ready to go. The cheapest and ugliest thing in the building world, it lived mostly in the architectural gutter. When it comes to an aggregate made out of sand, cement, gravel and reinforcement bar, it's a Frankenstein body in a way, so to make it into a unit is not kind of a counterintuitive thing. Why not see what could be done with that gutter rat? It might be permanent, noble, beautiful. It would be cheap. 1429. I was facing a blind wall. Whispers got clearer. I hide under the wall's shadow, blindly moving towards the entrance. What first it felt like rough crannies turning shortly into warm velvety surface, gently running over my goosebumps. One might say that the only way to assure that the Ennis house will survive is for some rich actor to buy it and move in. I was very worried about. I hope the curse of the Ennis house can be removed. I've hit a, you've hit a dead man. My sense of the house was that it's a lot like Gloria Swatson in Sunset Boulevard. It had been this astonishing beauty, but nobody cared anymore. I believe that if people only knew about this, they'd help save it. 1431. One edge, the point where the mineral skin comes to an end, the portal. I stood stock still, frozen to the spot as my dead silence framed ongoing conversation. Submerging chaos, drowned in uncertainty, only a hoarse voice caught my attention. Do not be scared of me, of my appearance. I, I'm a temple, or so people used to call me, a fortress. I've been told I'm one of a kind, this rare beauty. We all can see the trembling sun and the looming moon tangle in its network of stars, but only few of us are seen back. 
blazing contently at their Brownian dance, fueled by universal heterotopia, I could have only aspired being part of this cosmic enigma. People believe that one day I'll turn into a constellation. They freed me of any weight from the moment when my blocks will no longer be part of gravity's real. Of gravity's real. Now they are mocking me, atrocious once a few days ago as he was throwing rocks towards me, haunted, decrepit, and so on. They hid a dead man beside my body and shaded my soul under the burden of paranormal. Why would they do that? A prolonged mechanical sound marked the opening of the gate. Driven by a foreign attraction, beyond reason, beyond thought, beyond fear, it took seven senseless steps to fully face the portal. Space and time vanished as blinding sharp light took over the skyline by an explosion of gilding stacks. Facing the world, my existence diffracted, exceeding any imaginable limit. An individualized nature engaged me into an avid curiosity for the unknown. Transposed by mortality, I stepped on top of the magnificent floating platform. I fell in love with the house. That Alice came with it. You remember the fun we had when you poisoned me? <laughs> Something you ate, the doctor said. Yes, arsenic on the rocks. And sometimes I wonder what we're doing here. Grown men making mud pies to sell to the great unwashed. Claude, let me ask you something. If it had been serious, if someone had been killed, would it have made any difference? No one would. Seven people, including my brother, have been murdered in it. If someone had been, though, would it have made any difference? No. He would kill me if he could. The warning signs weren't posted. You know that, don't you? Would it have made any difference? The crime you two planned was indeed perfect. Only the victim is alive and the murderers are not. We should go. You sure it's all right to bring me along? Hmm? She'll be thrilled. Yeah, shall I bring something? Champagne? Make a good headline. Playboy kills wife with champagne cork. She'd adore it. I depend on your existence. Unable to perceive the shape of one and another, we coexist as two entities engaged in a slow down rhythm posed by an artificial magnetic field. I will protect you, give you freedom to explore the unknown. And in return, as I'll get closer to you, I'll be able to expand more and more till reaching the sun or even the gods. I'm able to float, to elevate. I only need your commitment in order to do that. That's what Lloyd, my creator, told me at the beginning. He freed the mountain from the rootless burden of immobility, liberating small clusters of its flesh and as waves hitting the rocks, enable it to rise and expand its memory to new experiences, diverging thus from the original inertia. That's how I was created. That's why I need you. I can tell you my stories about the places I've seen with the help of my previous inhabitants, their presence humbled my heart and filled my soul with immeasurable joy. Unfortunately, their memory is not enough to keep me alive. I have to be present, otherwise the mountain will absorb me back as I'll crumble, turn into dust, then crystallize back in my original state. Welcome to LA. Hey, listen, thank you for bringing me down, Mr. Silver. Milos, call the boys. <laughs> this place is intense. Consider it home. Mrs. Este decided the pool needed a dead horse in it, so we got one. So what do you think? Oh. On your mark. Get set. Go. 
What do we do about him? Broom him. Time to lose everybody who knows anything. And I mean everybody. Best of learning the kids, sincerely. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's the spirit. Now come on in. He has a reason for getting us all up here to this dreadful old house. Gloomy old house. To see some ghosts? Thank you, Tommy. This is the kind of legacy I dreamt about. Come on! Come on. Perfect. <laughs> I think we've set a very good example. You're telegraphing that wheel kick. Hey, hey! Johnny, Johnny, Johnny! What a surprise, man! Eh? Yeah. Welcome to LA. This home now has a new owner. He fell in love with the house and will have a very long love affair that will last until he will die. He'll put his heart and soul into this house. It lives and breathes for him and he lives and breathes for it. Different from Laura Belknap, who was overwhelmed by the house. It's inherently dramatic. I was so interested in the Ennis house that I drew up and stuck a note in the mailbox that said, if you let people in for tours, please call me. Someone called. Now come on in. And I went and felt in love. I did think it was strange looking at first, a bloomy, dreadful old house. Who makes a concrete house? The living room can be compared to a drama of Sophocles. When I first saw the picture of this place, I thought, really, there's just a wobbly. Who, who does that? It felt like a ruin, which was really crazy to be inside, something that felt very much like Anchor Wat. This place is intense. It, it felt more, much like someone else's kind of bizarre Blade Runner fantasy. After all, I really didn't see the darkness. I think I saw this place really as it presented strength and beauty. It was my fortress. This is the kind of legacy I dreamed about. I have no purpose being alone. Every time someone leaves me, an unbearable pain takes over. Last time my blocks raised high as stars in the sky, creating constellation when there was no one or another, no hierarchy. Only a constant flow driven by a fluorescent curiosity submerged into the ripples of silence. For what felt like hours, the gravitational force engaged into sharp spells of crackling metal, imposing forcefully as a curse over the liberation of floating. Pressure increased, creating a void within my body. My tears fell, left burnt like acid, and my skin was punctured by prickle, prickly blinding spikes of light. In all that chaos, I was able to spot the mountain as I was falling, carefully preparing to catch me into pieces, having no idea regarding the heights where I'm coming from. Then I collapsed. I thought it was the time for me to vanish, as shards of darkness continue expanded as violent vines of death over my skin. The decaying pattern was darker than the nights when the moon hides itself and the stars are afraid. It was even darker under the sharp light of the sun. The sun. The one I felt so close even a few moments before, sludgering me in warmth, baking me in cold. Memory saved me and enabled me to reinforce, to heal. The urge for living overcoming the sorrow, and now, now I'm ready to get to know you, to help you discover the world in any way you can imagine. It is nice to meet you. My name is Ennis. Print identification. Your floor number, please. Decker 97. This is your house. So that your two worlds would be within reach. 
It's finished. It's absolutely beautiful. I wanted to see you. I think I'm a replicant, don't you? What if I go north? Disappear. Would you come after me? taught me that anything was possible. We could be whoever we want. Live however we want. Isn't that what you believe? The very beginning, I believed that the textile system block should be held sacrosanct. But if you go to Japan, you see, if you follow out the idea of building in concert with nature, in concert with nature means that it has a life. And when you carry forward with life at some time, life ends, it should deteriorate. That would be the logical conclusion of the system. The house is far cry from that decrepit prediction. From the city, you can't help but wonder what that majestic thing on the hill is. Then when you get up there and look back at the city, it's breathtaking. It's both an object that invites us and piques our curiosity. And once you arrive, your curiosity is only enhanced. The house is sort of a freak. It is going to stand on that hill a hundred years or more, long after we are all gone. It will be pointed out as the Annis house and pilgrimages will be made to it by lovers of the beautiful from everywhere. It is an aberration as all truly individualistic things are. Midnight. In all their movement, taken together or singular, each block seemed to display a kind of cautious but not parallel alertness, a curiosity avid for quick apprehension of a new and expected form, unable to exceed the limits set by a mysterious law. The contrast was inexpressible between that lived curiosity and the simmering immensity that stretched away out of sight, aiming to connect the ancient gods all the way up to the sun, returning spikes of light toward what is mortal. The floating colossus engaged into a universe of inertia where secret forces were enhanced in spite of the powerful changeless silence. I sat on seeing and sank into Venice's immeasurable grandeur. Um, as ending, uh, an explanation for the chameleon text was that I used the voices of uh, all of those personas, starting from the architects, Frank Lloyd Wright, Roy Wright, and Eric Wright, the third generation who work on the house. And then also uh, quotes, from the inhabitants of the house, architectural critics and structure critics. And also at the end, the last five lines are few uh, characters which were presented in movies. The short movies that were the first one following the idea of the course, presenting the house on Haunted Hill. The second about the part in between, switching from this imaginably haunted house to what the, possi what the po what's possible for persona can be and the day of locust combined with House of Haunted Hill. The third video focusing on heterotopia as it gather around all these characters that live inside house and presenting their way of living inside. So in 
female, the day of the locust, the karate kid, the part three, black rain, rush Howard, and the 13th floor. And for the fourth video, the part of ascending, it was Blade Runner, the fourth season of few segments from the fourth season of Game of Thrones and the third season of, of Westworld. So yeah, I use all those elements and try to build together the, the story in order to, to present who the persona Ennis is. <laughs>